Hey everybody. I don't know if you saw the last one I did, but I hated it so much that I decided to go immediately pour another one. Um, that was the first time I poured these colors, and when you're pouring some of the colors, um, you find out which ones don't play nicely together. Um, so sometimes you just have to ditch your pour, let it dry, and repaint over it. So that was the one, and we're going to do this one. Um, so what I did, uh, is I did multiple layers on the previous one, um, which gave me some nice striping, but the combination of, I think the orange next to the blue kind of started making brown in there, and that's not good. So we're going to try this again, and uh, it's one of my friends um, is wanting this color combination, so we're going to try it till we get it. Um... Anyways, if anybody knows somebody that would like a home on the west side over off of uh, 5218 Palmer Avenue, that's in between Appleton and San Juan, um, kind of, uh, if you turn in on Harvester from San Juan and then take a left onto uh, Palmer, the house will be on the right. It's cute white, it's got white awnings. It's going up for sale Thursday for $137,750. Hardwood floors, comes with the washer dryer and all appliances. Um, it's ready to go, you can move right into it. So um, give me a call or have somebody give me a call if they're looking for a home on the west side. It's very affordable. Three bedroom, one bath. Um, AC and heater is only five years old. It's managed by Madden Air, which is the company my dad works for. Uh, septic was pumped four years ago. Driveway, walkway, um, and house was just pressure washed. Roof is, I believe, seven to eight years old. I'd have to look up the disclosure again. But anyways, uh, the house is ready to go. So let me know if you've got somebody. In the meantime, let's pour some paint. All right, this looks more like what I was looking for earlier. And inside of the cup. It's really cool looking. Alright, so the combination I think for this one, the key was to put a tiny little bit of white in the bottom, then do blue, then purple, then pink, then orange, then yellow. Alright, let's see what happens. Let's torch this real quick. We don't want the yellow to run under. I will lose some of it off the edge, but I don't want to. I don't want to lose any more than I need to. And I might just run some more yellow around it. But um, I'm really excited. We've got these layers starting already, and the purple and the blue together look really um. They look really neat together. Make sure you have good ventilation when you're doing the torch. You really shouldn't be running your torch very long anyways. Um, but make sure that you have good ventilation. So we're going to run this design down this way. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little white down here to give it a place to run. I've got yellow left, so I might use some of this yellow. Wasting it. I'm not wasting all my white. I'm still using the colors and getting the layers out of it. start this moving now. I have to make some more white too. Mm -hmm. 
Now before I get to before I walk this too far down, I want to walk it back up a little bit and see if I can get some of this design over here. So the way the paint is right here, I want to gently move everything up so I don't lose these layers. And this is another reason why you want your white paint. You want your paint to help this whole thing slide versus um, rolling over on itself. So slide everything back and try to get it over in that corner. Just slowly let it go. I don't want to lose everything, so I'm put some white on the edge there. Using a little bit of white in your background, leaving some open space or negative space helps your design really. Just overall, you'll end up liking it better than if you cover the entire board. Unless the entire design is just awesome, but a lot of times just that blank space helps your composition. I'm really pleased with the colors and the layers though. back a little bit because I don't want to lose all of this. I'm going to put some more white over this edge. Make sure you get all the edges covered with whatever color. That way you don't have to worry about painting your edges. Okay. Now we're just going to walk this down the board here. This is sometimes the hardest part when you have to decide how much you want to keep. Now, because I don't want to continue to put a ton of white in there, I think I'm going to continue these colors and stretch them. And I have plenty of these colors, so I'm not worried about uh, wasting my paint because I've got plenty of it. And this will probably be the one of the few projects that I do this for, um, unless I get another request. Kind of wishing I did a, a little bit of yellow in the middle.
I'm very tempted to let the center of this just go right off the edge. I think I am. So I'm going to cover that corner. And then I'm going to let this design walk right off the edge because it, the center does not have, uh, does not hold any interest for me really. Um, the really neat part is the all the layers that the pink and purple are creating. So right now I'm just going to see how much I can just let fall dead center and just hopefully that will all drain off without losing all the pink on the edges. Yep. See I've got just enough to highlight that action there. Alright, that's much, much happier with that. Now I'm just going to let it all drag back down a little bit. And then I'm going to try to widen it. bright yellow just right on the edge there. I'm going to let it drag down. The weight is almost in the center right now and I want everything to go a little bit towards that corner. I think I'm going to put some more yellow on this left corner over here because it's starting to get muted looking. Um, up a little bit. Now I'm going to let that stretch off so that it doesn't look too much different than the rest. Yep, that was the right decision. way we've got bright colors in all the corners. All right, well, running out of battery here. Hope you enjoyed that, and um, catch you next time.